Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another first impressions video. In today's first impressions video, we are taking a look at the Resilient Suppressors Putnik. And before we get this video started, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to this video's sponsor, which is going to be Lingle Industries. This is an awesome partnership that I'm super excited about because the owner of Lingle Industries has been a great friend of mine for years, and he's actually been a follower on the channel for a very long time. They make a wide variety of accessories for your awesome guns like B&Ts, Strybogs, Scars, and everything in between. Primarily what you see them kind of made famous for is their lower receivers for Strybogs and B&Ts, and that allows you to use standard CZ Scorpion mags, which are readily available now, and they are all over the place. You can also put standard triggers in there and a few other odds and ends, and they're also aluminum lowers, so it's going to be a little bit more rugged than your standard polymer lower that is generally on those guns. They're also giving you guys a discount code for checking out this video. That's just going to be FF15 at checkout, and that's going to save you 15% off of your order. I greatly appreciate their support. Oh my God, I never thought I would see the day to see the big chungus on the channel the soda can, the beer bottle, whatever you want to say. It is the Resilient Arms Putnik, and I'm proud to say that I think it is the first time the Putnik has been in a full tabletop review out there on the interwebs. I am going to feel confident in saying that at about this point. As soon as the guys over at Resilient drop this on their social media page as a teaser, a while ago now, I have been dying to get my hands on one here on the channel. Now, of course, full disclosure, what is my relationship with Resilient? They did send me this suppressor for free to check out and give my honest opinions of. They have never once asked me to say a specific thing in this video, and they never see these videos before they come out. Also, side note, I, I don't know why in this new filming location it's freaking raining whenever I have time to do these videos. So during the lulls in my voice, if you hear any pattering in the background, that is rain trying to do my best. It is what it is. This, if you haven't guessed it already, is an AK suppressor. Resilient took an original Zenitco-ish Russian AK suppressor, and they essentially saw it. They're like, man, that looks awesome and we can do it better. So they redesigned the entire thing internally. Resilient is a very large suppressor company as is. They make some incredible suppressors, but I'm telling you guys right now that this suppressor may get them on the big player status like silencer code, dead air status. This thing is that cool, that innovative, and that different in the market. And we're going to, of course, talk about that in today's video. Now, the Putnik comes in at around $899-ish, so I think that is a very reasonable price for a steel suppressor. On first glance, a lot of people look at this can and they think, man, that just looks ridiculous. It is so large. And then they start realizing that it is a clone of an original Russian suppressor. So again, it looks that way for a reason. Now, aside from just the comically large girth that this suppressor has, it is designed to have that girth because with that two inch almost diameter, you are getting a lot of volume. And that is going to allow a lot more gas to expand inside of the suppressor. A lot of people want these small, tiny, sleek suppressors, but at the end of the day, the tinier you get that can, the less volume that the suppressor has and the less room that gas has to fully expand and dissipate before it leaves the barrel, causing more noise. They decided to make it hub thread pattern in the back, which I think is one of the smartest moves that they ever could have done. So this, what is in it right now, is a JMAC 24 mil thread adapter. This is how your Putnik is going to ship with this JMAC adapter. But what that adapter is sitting inside of is just a standard 
standard 1.375 hub mounting, which is the same as Bravo and Silencer Co. It's the same that now a lot of chemo adapters come out in, Yankee Hill, Reardon. There are a wide variety of adapters for that mount. So this opens it up to not only be an AK suppressor, but you could put this on an AR, you could put it on a bolt gun, really any gun out there that is able to take a standard muzzle device for the most part, now will be able to, to work with this Putnik. So it takes the Putnik from being an AK only suppressor and it pushes it into a very realistic role for a lot of different guns that are out there on the market. And that again is awesome. We first took this out on 545 and with 545 it sounded excellent. I wanna make a side point and say that never in my life have I shot an AK suppress with a variety of suppressors, Nomads, Omegas, Wolverines from Dead Air. I have shot a lot of cans on AKs and never once have I felt comfortable unless I was shooting subs to shoot that gun without hearing protection. The entire day of shooting this suppressor, I did not have hearing protection on and I felt absolutely no need to put it on. There was no spiking in my ears or anything like that. So as far as how it sounded, my ears can be a little bit of a testament there to what it was sounding like. Downrange, you're still getting a lot of crack, and that is what you're gonna get when we were shooting 545, 223, and full power 762 by 39 and non-subsonic ammunition. 545 performed the best out of the three in the Riley Defense AK-74, and I think that is because it was just standard Wolf 545, and that's a little bit, underpowered when it comes to the variety of 545 that's out there. So I could see why that would sound a little quieter, probably a little bit underpowered. 223, a little bit more spice down range, and 762 by 39 sounded very similar to 223. And that was full power corrosive spam can 762 by 39. So that was the spicy stuff, and it was still handling it just fine. Now, when it comes to how interesting the suppressor was. This is the cool part about it. There was a lot of spice down range, but at the shooter's ear, there was nothing. It was the, the most bizarrely cool thing I've seen on a suppressor in a long time. And I think that is due to, and I, this is not something that Resilient has told me, I'm just assuming, it has kind of like a not flow through, but almost flow through outer shelf here that you have holes on the outside of the suppressor in a curve heading upward. And we were noticing as the gas was leaving, it was kind of having this brake effect, but also it was shooting it forward. So not only was it suppressing the sound, but it was shooting all of the sound directly forward. And it was like way down range. And also on top of that, the tone of the suppressor is so deep. And I think that is just because again of the diameter of the suppressor, but we were blown away with what the can sounded like to our ears in person. AKs, no matter what way you look at it, uh, you can do a lot of adjusting to them, but they are just, they're not going to be that 300 blackout subsonic bolt gun whisper quiet. The guns are loud. They have loud actions. They have port pop in three different places. And there's just, there's nothing you're gonna do to get this thing whisper quiet. But when we look at AK suppressors that are out there on the market, this has been by far the best experience I have, I've ever had on an AK suppressor. And it got it quiet enough that again, I did not need hearing protection. So that was a huge, huge win for the Putnik and me and the FF Pocket Gunsmith were blown away. During the day of shooting, you kind of start being like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know. It's spiking a little bit down range. I'm not, you know, it's still sounding very quiet and then we put an Omega on. Now I did not get this on video, it was towards the end of the range day, and the FF Pocket Gunsmith's like, you know, let me throw on my Omega, I just wanna, I just wanna compare the two. In a later d video, we're gonna compare them all side by side, and ultimately, when we put this thing next to the Omega, it was night and day. The spike of the Omega, which we thought was a good AK can before this, the Putnik blew it out of the water. There was no contest. It, it was 
very, very, very good. Now it is direct thread and face mounted. So this is not going to butt up against the front sight block and it is going to have a gradual baffle system where it's getting a little larger out as you go through the baffles towards the front. And they do this to allow for a little bit of weakness in the concentricity department on everything we were shooting it on today. It performed fine, it was concentric, no issues, but you always wanna check that. And then also with any other direct thread can, make sure it's staying tight. That is just something you wanna do always. Through a few mag dumps, it was loosening up slightly, but again, we reached up, just kinda of tightened it up a little bit, and it was just fine. Now, you guys are gonna notice uh, the FF Pocket Gunsmiths 104 chugging along with some issues. That was not the can. We just threw in a KNS adjustable piston that was actually not the right piston for the 104, but the FF Pocket Gunsmith was able to kinda of fabricate it to make it work. And with this can, there's a lot less back pressure coming into the gun. So we were noticing that on the Omega, the piston was running fine. On the Putnik, way less gas coming back. My guess is because of the volume and the ports in the front, and it was causing issues. So we ended up just closing up the piston entirely, running it like it did not have an adjustable gas piston, and the gun ran fine. So I was noticing no gas in the face on my 545 or the 106. So again, I think you have that to look forward to as well on the Putnik is a little bit less gassy on your guns. And when it comes to AKs, they typically like to beat the crap out of themselves to press. I'm trying to find negatives about it in this video. You guys know I'm always hesitant with overly positive reviews because people think they're a little bit disingenuous, but I'll, I'll pull this out for any sort of a gripe. On a full-size AKM, it does look a little bit odd out there on the front because you have a massive can out there on the front of your gun. So there is that, just be aware of that out there. And it is a little bit heavier, so there's that. It's but on a shorter 104 platform, this thing looks absolutely at home. It just looks like it is just, it needs to be there. So as long as you're running it on the right gun, it's gonna look the part. That is going to wrap up this first impressions video on the Resilient Suppressors Putnik. Yes. If you guys have any other questions about this suppressor or anything else on the channel, please feel free to throw them down below in the comment section, and I absolutely will get back to you. While you're down there, head up to the description for the ways to support the channel, and as always, stay Stay tuned for more great videos coming soon.